Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask that you glorify your name as we continue through this last week of Easter. Let us look back to the entire season and see where you have guided us and you have led us and where you have shown us how to live, and let us be filled with your Spirit as we continue on in our life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today, in fact, is Wednesday of the seventh week of Easter, so uh, we are continuing through this last week, working our way towards Pentecost Sunday. Just as a quick note, uh, Pentecost Sunday is the end of the Easter season and the beginning of ordinary time, and then the following two Sundays, there are solemnities of Jesus, I think they're called, and they are movable feasts, is a sense, because they're all their date is based on Pentecost because the first one is the Holy Trinity, the second one is uh, Corpus Christi, also known the body of Christ, and obviously they are the week uh, the the week after and the second week after respectively from Pentecost. So their date changes all the time, but never in relation to Pentecost. And then from that point on, every Sunday until Thanksgiving, the until after Thanksgiving, the color will be green except for if it's a special day. And then during the week, obviously, it's the same same idea. And so there it is. Green is the uh, color of ordinary time. It is the longest season of the liturgical year. It's 34 weeks. It happens to be my favorite season. And uh, we go from there and say, well, why is my favorite season ordinary time and not Easter or for that matter, Lent? Because it is exactly what it is. It's ordinary time. This is what we do. And it's because most of our life it follows the ordinary time of life. So anyway, that's what's coming up next week. So we're seeing the second half of St. Paul's words to the uh, people of Ephesus. He is getting ready to leave. And now he's talking about preparing themselves and knowing, he says, uh, you will see that, you know, there'll be wolves coming for you. And there'll even be, as he explains, using my own words, dissension within the community. Well, yes, all of that happens. And all of that happens today. You still have people who will always be arguing of what the church actually teaches, what it says, everything else, how is it actually phrased. And then other people will come in and say, no, this isn't true. You shouldn't listen to any of this. You shouldn't listen to any of this. You got to go this way. And you hear this all the time. And what we're actually looking for is what is um, those, that whole idea of being sincere in our seeking to follow Christ. Now, if you know my teaching, it is pretty much across the board. And it is, we do have to understand that we're called to live by a moral standard, but don't even think about it if you're not a person of prayer. And it's very clear in Catholic teaching that if we're not praying, we cannot live uh, the teachings of Christ. We cannot live the teachings of the church. And therefore, we have to be people of prayer. And so that's where I always start. And I never start with, well, this is what it says we're supposed to do. So therefore, we're supposed to do that because it's not going to work that really doesn't go very far. And here's the reason why I say that. We have to be in touch with Christ. I have a real intense issue with this. And what do I mean? I know this, especially the 20th century, was filled with people in the Catholic Church who would preach all the time these rules they had to follow. Part of this comes from something I'm very critical of, and some people uh, are consider this the most sacred book in the world. It's not. I'm very critical of it, and that's the Baltimore Catechism. And uh, a lot of things that I don't like about the Baltimore Catechism, but one of the fruits of it was people who understood the rules of their faith, but they didn't understand the practices, the call to live in pe as people of prayer, to call to understand the prayer life of... Um, of a very spontaneous prayer life we're supposed to have to call to understand the practices of prayer that really help us along. So that's where I come from. 
that is where my standard is. So you won't see me coming up and saying, this is the way you have to live your life because that's what it says in the Bible. I will always teach people you need to come to know Christ. And then when you want to know how to live your life, you ask Christ to lead you and you will find where he leads you, where he leads you. Much of it is in the Bible. You can see that. And do understand that we as uh, all Christians know that the Bible includes the very last line in the Gospel of John, which is Jesus did in so many things, there wouldn't be enough books in the world to hold all the accounts of this. And St. Augustine said that's important because he, they're not talking about actual writing. What's being talked about there is our ability to understand what it is that Jesus taught that grows over time. And so our ability to understand grows. We'll talk more on the other side of the break. You can now leave a message for us, which we can air and discuss on this program. Just call 617-297-7452. That's 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. Feel free to call, leave a comment, a question, or even feedback, and we may play it on the air. I can discuss your comment or question as well, so give that a try. 617-297-7452, 617-297-7452. And don't forget our website, catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com, and check out our website. You can find where our podcast platforms are. By the way, you can also find on there any a book or program or whatever mentioned on the show. You can click on there and find all these different uh, resources you have and you do all kinds of things over there at catholicaudiomedia.com and we come from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, stanthonyalston.org that's stanthonyalston.org by the way if you or you know someone who's going to the Boston Calling concert look us up, come to our 10 o'clock a.m. mass, the Boston Calling is a big concert that's happening over at Harvard University it's happening on the Boston side of Harvard University over at the Athletic Center Center. And uh, so if you know anyone who happens to be going to that and they're looking for a place to go to church, remember St. Anthony in Alston, we're right down the street from the Coliseum, which you can tell which building is the Coliseum because it looks just like the one in Rome. Just look for that building. Oh, that's the Coliseum. Then the St. Anthony's is about a mile down the road on Holton Street. So we're talking about here we are understanding these these this teaching of St. Paul. So he knows that once he leaves, he's not going to be there to correct the people who need to be corrected, to guide people to we that need to be guided. And so he says that's going to happen. And people are going to try to come up and teach you other things. That has always been the history of the church church and that always will be the history of the church but there were words in there that in the bible that help us to understand that and i said first of all we have to be people of prayer if we're not people of prayer then forget it because you will lose the ability to live the teachings of the church if you're not a person of prayer because why because the teachings of the church which many people understand are strictly morality it's a lot more than that but they only understand the morality the teachings of the church are rooted in our relationship with Christ. If you don't have that, then it's always then it, then you're just caught up in what we should do. And that only goes so far. Or even if I don't do this, I'm going to end up in hell. That only goes so far. It really does. You need that relationship with Christ. You need to be people of prayer. And that's one of the things that Paul is leaving the people with. They already know. They're already part. They already have their prayer meetings. They already have their instruction. They already have what they need to understand. But he's going to say different teachings comes up. You know, I started this week talking about the charismatic renewal. And I talked about, um, uh, you know, the history, a little bit of the history and everything, and how that it's ver not very strong here in the United States. And I explained one of the reasons is because our culture is rooted in control, and a lot of people feel uncomfortable with the charismatic renewal. Now, I've been in other countries, especially, obviously, Brazil. I've been in, you know, South America. And the charismatic renewal is strong there, but so uh, is the participation of priests and bishops. For some reason, it gets very strong in tropical countries. That means South America, Africa, and Asia. I don't know why, and it is true that tropical 
countries tend to be more spiritual for some reason. So that's one of the things that you experience as you see, for example, when I've been in Brazil, I can name you uh, um, several bishops that I know are actively involved in the charismatic renewal. And why that's important is they're able to give a direction to the charismatic renewal that you don't see as much in the Northern Hemisphere for some reason, including the United States. So they're able to guide people. Now, granted, if someone comes to me and says something, uh, well, of course, I'm in the charismatic renewal, but they say something they learn, learned at a prayer meeting. I don't have to be part of the charismatic renewal to know enough about Catholic teaching that I can affirm or I can say maybe you're not exactly down the right path there. But I, I do know enough of the of the renewal as well to be able to give them whatever guidance is there. But it's important to understand that for some reason. And this is what Paul is concerned about that there will be people who will come in and start leading them down the wrong way. But their prayer has got to be there, and they can be guided by the presbyters. We'll talk more tomorrow. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out catholictv.com. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.